Crashing or compressing the project is something that we do to reduce the amount of time that our project takes. It involves evaluating the critical path activities and seeing if they can be reasonably reduced in time. And more than that, seeing if they can be cost effectively reduced. So let's take a quick look at what I'm talking about here. Here we have a graph that shows the cost of an activity versus the time that it takes. We have a point here of our normal cost and duration. So this particular task is going to take 10 days and cost us $500. What we're going to do is we're going to ask those people that are involved in estimating on our project, tell us uh, using normal techniques and normal conditions, if we added more resources to this task, how much could we shorten it by and how much would that cost? Let's say that they come back and say, well, we could actually shorten that to just five days, but it's going to double the price. It's going to cost $1,000 at that time to actually get this activity done in five days. Now we have something to go with. Assuming that that information is correct, we can draw a line between these two points on our graph. And we can basically calculate the slope of that line to give us the amount per day that it's going to cost to crash or reduce this activity duration. So once we have that amount uh, for our tasks, we will keep on doing that for all the tasks on our critical path and see uh, which of those tasks are in fact crashable. We may have some that we simply cannot reduce the amount of time uh, no matter how much more money we pour into them. And we do have a limit to that um, amount of crashing we can do. Each specific task will have some limit. In this case, it's five days. In others, it may just be one day or one week or whatever it is uh, that we can crash it to. But we couldn't, for example, crash this to just three seconds amount of time if we put $12 million into it. Okay, It's just not reasonable to uh, consider. So what we can do is look at all the critical path activities, or in fact, all the activities in our network entirely, find out what that slope value is, what the cost is per time increment, and find out what the maximum crash time is. So you see here going from uh, task A, it can be reduced a maximum of one time increment, or let's just say one day, for a cost of $100. Whereas task B could be reduced by up to four days for $200 per day, of cost. Look away at the bottom there, you'll notice task G cannot be reduced no matter how much money we pour into it. It's going to be five days and five days only. If we now look at these tasks in our project network, what we would do is we would put out here, I've just put out the relationships. Uh, these are all just simple finish to start relationships for this example and put their durations in the box underneath the task ID. You will notice for task G that I have a notation there of 5x. This is because, if you look at that table, we cannot crash this or reduce this anymore. So I want to put some sort of notation on here, either when I've crashed something once and it was only I could only crash it once, or when it is not crashable at all. I'm going to put that little X after the duration to let me know, hey, you cannot consider this any longer for uh, reducing the project time. So what I need to do now is I need to actually figure out what is the critical path, because I want to concentrate on just those tasks on the critical path. So if I add things up here, and this path from A to C to F to G is 33 days. The one from a to B to E to G is 29 days. The one from A to B to D to E to G is 32 days. 
So it looks like, in fact, this first path that we looked at is my critical path, giving my overall project a duration of 33 days. So now what I'm going to do that I have that information is I'm going to first look at what is the cost of my project just under normal conditions. So if I add up all these direct costs, I find that my uh, project is going to cost me $9,700. So at a time period of 33 days, it's going to cost me $9,700. Now what I want to do is I want to look at those paths on this critical path, so A, C, F, and G, and ask which one would be the cheapest to reduce in time. Now I can't look at G, okay, remember that, but I can look at A, C, and F. Well, it looks like A would be the one that I would want to crash here. So if I take that from five days down to four days, it will add $100 to my overall project cost. So now I know that at duration, time duration 32 or 32 days, it's going to cost me $9,800 to get this project completed. Let's continue this forward. What I need to do at each step along the way here, though, is ask, has my critical path changed? Okay, so if I add up all the values, it looks like uh, everything has been reduced by 1. So A, B, E, and G is now 28 days. A, B, D, E, G is 31 days. And A, C, F, G is 32 days. So it looks like I still need to reduce something on that um, path there of A, C, F, and G, remembering that A can no longer be crashed and G cannot be crashed. So it looks like I'm going to be crashing and reducing the time increment for task C. So I'm going to reduce that by 1 and add $600 to my overall costs. I don't put an X after because I can still reduce it by one more should I desire to. Once again, add up my paths to the network here. This time I find that I, in fact, have two paths that are critical. So I have um, <clears throat> one path uh, toward the bottom here, the A, C, F, and G, as well as A, B, D, E, and G. So I have to look now at reducing those pass so that I could reduce my overall project duration, meaning I have to do something on both of these uh, critical paths through my network. So in this particular instance, I will look at the uh, various possibilities here. I need to reduce either C or F to reduce that part of the path by one day. So I have C, <clears throat> uh, which is going to cost me $600 a day. And I can do that one more time, or I can do F for $1,500. Well, I'll probably choose C there. And then between B, D, and E, it looks like B is $200, D is $150, and E is $400. So it looks like I would probably choose C and D and reduce those by one time increment or one day. So in this case, C will go to 11, but it's going to go to 11x. We won't be able to reduce it anymore. And D will go to uh, from 3 down to 2. I'm going to add those extra costs now and find that if I want to complete this project in just 30 days, it's going to cost me $11,150. If I want to further carry this forward, what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to actually look at uh, the other durations that I can reduce. looks like I'm going to be confined to F on this lower path. So even though that's very expensive, 
Uh, if I want to get down to 29 days, the next step, I'm going to have to crash F. And I'm also going to probably crash D again, because we know from the previous example that was the cheapest. So now I get down to a time period of 29 days, and I find out that my total cost for the project, if uh, I want to achieve this particular time date, is estimated to be $12,800. At this point, we'd have to evaluate whether we we're done crashing this project. Looks to me like we could probably go down by one more time increment, get this down to 28 days. We could reduce uh, F by one more, and we could either reduce B or E. But instead of going through that, let's take a minute and actually look at what we've done so far and look at the costs that have been increasing as we've shortened the amount of days our project takes. So you'll see here we started with our original direct costs of $9,700 at 33 days. And we worked through this problem and found out that we could go all the way down to 29 days for $12,800. And you can see those other direct costs along the way. It's more dramatic if we actually change the scale a little bit. You can start to see that we that curve is getting steeper and steeper uh, as we get up toward the maximum crash time. And that makes sense because we're having to pile on more resources and we're having to crash more of the expensive tasks, if you will, in order to meet these shorter time durations. So you may be wondering, why would I ever want to do this? That's a great question. Crashing does do some things to our project besides what we've discussed here. One of the big things is it increases risk. So you may decide, well, this 33-day time increment looks pretty good to me. It's the cheapest. We'll just stick with that. And that certainly might be a decision that you'd make and would be valid as a project manager. But there may be other things in play here as well. One of them may be that you simply have a deadline that you have to meet. So let's say this is a particular product that we want to get finished. We want to get the prototype done so we can bring it to a trade show. And that trade show is 30 days away from now. The overall profitability of our project would be dramatically reduced if we're not able to display this product at that trade show. Therefore, we will go ahead and incur the direct costs associated with crashing the project in order to get it done by that deadline. So if we have something that's severely time constrained, that's one of the reasons we might actually crash the project. The other, well, there's several others actually, but one of the others is that we may have an incentive from the customer to get it done early. Okay, this is not uncommon in very complex construction projects, especially in large metro areas where they do not want to have their infrastructure offline for any given amount of time or for more than they have to. So in this particular case, I have calculated in a, those direct costs, but also accounting for an incentive of $1,000 a day if we get it done early. So you can see here that um, there's actually a time point at 30 days that is actually our optimum cost and time. So as far as our company is concerned, yes, the direct costs increase significantly by trying to reduce the project time down to 30 days, but those are also offset to such a large degree by this incentive that it actually is worthwhile for us to go ahead and crash the project down to 30 days. Another thing that you might see or you might encounter is the fact that some projects will have not only those costs associated with various activities and work packages, but there may also be indirect costs associated with the overall project as well. And those will tend to increment uh, over time or tend to accumulate over time. And so um, what you may find is when you add together both those direct costs as well as the indirect costs that you're accumulating as your project goes on, when you add those together to get your total costs, you'll find that there's some optimum cost time point that you might want to complete this project in. So in this case, it would be 
uh, in this scenario I presented here, it would be day 32. So we want to go ahead and incur some of the costs of crashing this project in order to eliminate some of those indirect costs that would be associated with our project lasting longer. So this is not uncommon to see, uh, especially in project management textbooks, you may see a graph like this, where you actually have the indirect costs crossing over the direct costs, and some optimum time point is um, usually located right around that crossover point. So to summarize, crashing certainly reduces our overall project time. It can be very useful in helping us find an optimum project time, especially when we consider deadlines, incentives, and indirect costs. The drawbacks are that it is always going to increase our direct costs. It is going to increase the amount of time we're going to spend on management because we're going to have more resources, more people to coordinate. We're going to have larger teams working on these various activities. Therefore, it may also increase our risk. So, Crashing is something we definitely want to consider as a project manager. We want to present all the options to our stakeholders, and when we're figuring out the project schedule, we certainly want to consider all the options that are available to us. However, just because we can crash something does not necessarily mean that we will crash it. We need to consider the bigger picture of our project here.